All right, today's video is going to be on the toxic effects of zinc and how much of it your body can actually tolerate. Now, zinc is one of the most important trace minerals in your body. I mean, it's good for your immune function. It helps to make new DNA. It helps to make new protein. It supports wound healing. And a zinc is just that one nutrient that participates in more than 300 enzymes reaction. Which means that without zinc, your body's biochemistry is actually incomplete. All right? Zinc is very important for your body function. And just like every other thing, too much of zinc can be very toxic and dangerous. Now, when you take large amount of zinc for a very short period, you're not really going to have issues. But when you take it in large amount over a long period, when you take it continuously, that is going to result in copper deficiency, all right? Because zinc and copper actually has to be in a balanced ratio. So some of the signs of copper deficiency are fatigue. That's because copper is very important for your energy producing pathway. So when you would lack sufficient copper in your blood or in your body, that could result in fatigue. All right, the next thing is anemia. Copper is important for iron absorption. So when you are deficient, that's also going to result in iron deficiency. Your body will not be able to absorb adequate amount of iron, which is going to result in anemia. Number three is weak immune system. You're going to have weak bones. You are going to become very sensitive to cold, to cold temperature. That's because copper is very important for your thyroid functions, which helps to carry out this function. All right, number six is memory issue. You are going to have pain, skin, vision loss, and then finally, you are going to have hypercholesterolemia. You are going to have increased production of the LDL cholesterol. Now, when you are deficient in copper, there is going to be increased production of this enzyme called hmg coa reductase, which is a key enzyme in cholesterol synthesis pathway. So when your copper level is very low, there's going to be an increased production of this enzyme, which is going to raise your LDL cholesterol, all right? Now, the recommended dietary allowance for zinc is typically about 11 milligrams per day for adult male and then 9 milligrams per day for adult female. Now, when you increase your zinc intake above the RODA, that is not going to make you to have copper toxicity or zinc toxicity because to a very large extent, your body can actually tolerate zinc. Now, you are only going to have zinc toxicity when you increase your intake above the tolerable intake. The tolerable upper intake of a nutrient is simply just the highest or the maximum amount of that nutrient that you can take that is unlikely to result in side effects. All right. So the tolerable upper intake of zinc is actually said to be 40 milligrams per day, all right? Now, when you increase your intake above this tolerable intake, that is when you are going to have copper deficiency. You are going to have all of these symptoms that I listed here. So 40 milligrams is the amount of zinc your body can tolerate. So when you increase your intake more than 40 milligrams, you actually need to be taking copper alongside with it. And how much copper do you actually need when you are taking more than 40 milligrams of zinc? Well, I would recommend you start taking 2 milligrams of copper along with it because that is going to help you to balance the zinc-copper ratio. When you have too much zinc, that is going to result in copper deficiency. So when you are taking more than the tolerable intake, the amount your body can tolerate, so you need to be taking 2 milligrams of copper alongside with it. Now, most of the time, zinc toxicity actually comes from the intake of vitamins, cold remedies, and a zinc supplement rather than from diet alone. Because some diets, some plant-based diet contains phytate, which can prevent the absorption of zinc. So because of that, when you are consuming plant-based diet, you are very unlikely to develop zinc toxicity, all right? So if you are experiencing any of these symptoms of copper deficiency, make sure to consult with your doctor for a proper diagnosis, all right? Thanks for watching. All right, before you go, if you've been enjoying my content and you've not subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now and then don't forget to share it with your friends and your family. Thanks for watching.